Hey everybody, this is Sean Riley with Riley Real Estate and MassHomesale.com with this week's Q&A Saturday video. Uh, this week we're going to be answering the question of, are we in a real estate bubble? Uh, a lot of people have talked to me about um, you know, where I think the market is going, what their thoughts are on it. Um, a lot of investors are starting to worry that things have been going up for a long time and we might be getting to um, an area where it'll be difficult for prices to keep going up for a long time. Um, so, <clears throat> my thought is we are not in a bubble. We're definitely um, pretty high on the ramp up. So, uh, real estate always goes in cycles. People talk about the last crash like it was something that's never happened before. It was much more extreme than um, what had generally been seen in the past. It ramped up a lot higher and it crashed a lot harder and a lot faster and stayed down for a longer time than what you might have seen in a lot of previous cycles, but like, you know, they always go up, they always go down. Um, you know, over time, they usually go like this. So you have a peak, it might come down a little bit, it goes up, that sort of thing. Um, so currently, we are definitely in an up cycle, and um, I don't think we're at the at a point where it's a bubble and everything is completely unsustainable, but we're definitely getting more into that area. Uh, nationally, I don't think it's quite as extreme locally, uh, especially in eastern Massachusetts. Not quite as much in New Hampshire, though it is starting to uh, be a little more apparent up there as well. Um, I think we're a little bit uh, farther up on the curve than places are in general. Real estate is local, and um, you know, even just within that broader eastern Massachusetts, or Massachusetts in general, um, category like you know each city and town could be in a different place and then some might you know even when uh <clears throat> prices might start going down in a lot of places doesn't mean every place will so just with that little caveat so nationally um i think uh things are not quite as high on the curve um you are starting to see things like there are some um, areas that are seeing, so they're not necessarily flattening out or going down, but they're definitely the rates of appreciation, which might have been, you know, double digits in 2014, you know, 2013 and 2014 were more like lower single digits for 2015, so you expect that to keep slowing down. Um, around here, so even in the most broadest view of the Boston metro a market which again is most of eastern Massachusetts how it when it's defined in that way um, actually saw no appreciation um, over the past year and uh, was pretty much the only major metropolitan area that didn't at least see some growth now some of them were you know 0.1 percent 0.2 percent stuff like that so it's not like we're totally out of it but um, not really any place had completely stopped looking at national stats from like CoreLogic and um, Realty Track and stuff like that. Um, the big thing is foreclosures, which is a very good leading indicator of where the market is going to be going, if there's going to be trouble. Again, nationally, things are still actually going down, but they're flattening off a little bit in most aspects. Um, there are a few things like foreclosure starts are up a little bit over the last couple of months, but they're still down overall from 2014 and to 2015 year stats. Um, but there were more completed foreclosures for the year in 2015 than there were in 2014, so that's interesting. Locally, this is where I think we are showing that we're different than the national data especially, and this was the case 10 years ago too. Um, as mentioned in a lot of foreclosure reports especially and in some of these videos that Massachusetts was a good year and a half to two and a half years ahead of most places in the country um, when the bubble started to deflate around here. Um, you know, around here people talk about things starting getting tough in 2005. Most of the rest of the countries talks about like 2007, 2008. Um, so while the rest of the country is, you know, on the national level, it's just starting to see like some, some indications that there's more foreclosures. We are very much into you know into the weeds as far as that goes. Um, uh, just some quick stats from our most latest, our most recent foreclosure report, which I will definitely link to below. Um, so scheduled auctions in Massachusetts are up 25% in 2015 over 2014. 
um, foreclosure deeds, so those are completed foreclosures, um, <clears throat> where the bank takes it back and it goes into their REO inventory um, you know, to be dispensed of in multiple ways. Uh, those were up 21.5% year over year, 2014 to 2015. And they've been going up for the last three quarters, so um, not just year over year, but they've been going up. So, you know, um, this quarter was higher than the last quarter, which was higher than the quarter before that. And they've also gone up five of the last six quarters. So, um, you know, not adjusting for the seasonality, but they are just kind of ramping up. And seasonally, you know, said year over year, they've uh, gone up as well. Um, the big one are petitions, so our foreclosure starts, which are kind of, again, it's like a leading indicator of where deeds are going to be going in a year to two years from now when the when they um, get through the entire system. Those, that's gone up a lot. So, uh, <clears throat> December 2015, they were up 118% over December 2014. So that, that month, seasonally adjusted, up over 118%. Um, they've gone up 22 straight months year over year. So December 2015 was higher than December 2014. November 2015 was higher than November 2014. That's what that means. So um, so another thing to keep in mind there is that's almost two full years. So now these numbers that are still going up, that so that number that went up 118% in December was on a number that was up almost 100% from the number from December of 2013. So overall, um, I don't have that number in front of me, but it was like over 300% increase from December of 2013 to December 2015. So that is really ramping up. Um, December 2015 happened to be the highest single month of foreclosure petitions since 2012. Any, so no, no other month in 2013, 14, or 15 had more than last month. Um, and overall, 55% increase for the year of 2015 over 2014 and they have gone up again so before we talked about 22 straight months um, year over year so you like I said the previous month the year before the same month the year before it was higher this time 22 straight months um, the highest overall month in December since 2012 55% higher this year than last year and uh, as we said with the deeds, so now petitions have gone up eight straight quarters and nine of the last ten. And for the fourth quarter of 2015 was at a level um, that was already back to what you would see back at the end of what would be considered the crisis um, in 2011, 2012. It's on par with a lot of the months or a lot of the quarters back then. So... That shows that we are definitely ramping up. A lot of people are saying it's still just clearing up old inventory, but the crash happened 10 years ago. And even stuff like Ibanez and some of the, the changes in um, having to do work more with um, homeowners for loan modifications that came around, I don't know, like 2013, I think. Uh, so, I mean, we're years removed from any of these roadblocks and like influx of um, bad loans that like still need to be cleared up. You know, I'm sure there's some of that, but you can't just say that's exclusively why we're seeing such a huge increase. So that is the biggest reason that I think that we are reaching the peak and a correction is on the horizon. If you look at our market reports, um, you will see a lot of places. Now these are just, again, these are just snapshots in time. I'm looking at the same month in t over the the current month, or the previous month, to have a full month of data, um, compared to the same month last year. So it is just a snapshot in time. Those things will fluctuate month to month. Some could be, you know, the next month it could be up even if it was down a lot in one month. You know, that can happen. But there is no shortage of, of towns and cities in the area that ha are seeing, like, you know, fairly large drops months in those um, consecutive, or those months year over year. Um, I will admit that I do tend to concentrate on the ones that go down just because I find that in much more interesting because everybody thinks things are going up. So being able to show that that's not necessarily true, I find that more interesting. Um, but again, there's no shortage of those. I easily find a dozen places a month where I can find those kind of um, numbers to work with. <clears throat> so that's just sort of showing that mm, you know, maybe this really is starting to happen in a lot of places. And um, 
But the big thing are those foreclosure stats. Those are the things that really have me convinced that we are going to see prices slow down, stop, or reverse in a lot of places a lot sooner than later. Um, I would really be surprised if in 2016 we don't see a lot more REO inventory from the banks as more and more of these um, increased foreclosure starts actually get through the system. When you have more REOs, you're going to have more inventory, which just in general will put downward pressure on the um, prices. And then REOs, even though banks are trying to get higher market, um, you know, closer to market value, doing a little bit more to make the houses more appealing, you still generally get those at a discount. So more inventory with a lot of it selling for less. Um, it's going to be more likely that pres prices are going to go down even for your, you know, arm's length retail sales. Um, and then it's just another perpetuation until, you know, more of the inventory gets cleared up. Um, investors start buying the stuff and putting a better product back on the market. Um, and that's just the cycle. So we're c certainly not in the same kind of bubble we were um, in, you know, around here 2005 uh, nationally with the, you know, great economic crisis, great recession stuff of 2008. We're not, we don't have the same as bad economic conditions overall with that kind of stuff either. So um, I don't think we're, we're certainly not going to crash the way we did before. But um, I think it's naive to think that we're just going to keep going up, 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 up for like the foreseeable future. We're definitely at a point where things are going to level off and most likely go down sooner rather than later. So those are my thoughts. <clears throat> um, I'm not a billionaire, so um, you know my my ability to do um, perfect financial forecasting is not there, and neither is almost anybody else's. Um, very hard things to predict. There are indicators. There are gut feelings. That's what I'm going with. Um, I do have a lot of experience, and I have been tracking this data for well over a year now. So I do think that I have a little bit of um, knowledge to be speaking from. But, uh, but like I said, you know, it, it, for the most part, these are just educated guesses, but this is my best feelings on that. Um, so anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys have to think. If you have comments, additional questions, want to know some of the data that I'm talking about, um, as always, you can just put a comment below. And if you have a question you'd like to see answered in a future video, you can leave a comment, fill out a form on the website, or uh, post something on our Facebook page, our Twitter account, or send an email to info at masshomesale.com. Um, but for now, uh, those are my thoughts on if we're in a real estate bubble, and uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.